Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at a very basic feature in Reaper that many newcomers may not be aware of and many seasoned users may have missed. That feature is the three different recording modes. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is my own cover of a song that was made popular in the mid to late 90s. Admittedly, I wasn't too familiar with the song, which I'm actually a little bit embarrassed to say because of how popular it is, but I'm having to learn it for performance. Sometimes the best way for me to learn a song is simply to start tracking it. The guitar, the bass, and the vocals in this are all my own, whereas the drums are actually MIDI. I know that I'm not normally a fan of MIDI drums, but in this case, I'm not learning the drums, I was just learning the guitar and the vocals, so it helped me to better focus. Let's take a listen to what I've got so far, and then we'll look at the recording modes. Hopefully my rendition of this song is not so close to the original that it gets demonetized, but that's a risk that I'm willing to take for the sake of education. I'll back up just a little bit before the pickup here, and let's take a listen. And that's what I've got so far. Let's go back to the beginning of this segment. And what I'd like to do first is just completely remove the second guitar and retrack it. I'll delete that media. And if we take a look at our record button, one thing that I advise all newcomers to Reaper to do is to right click everything. Right clicking the record button gives us access to the three different record modes in Reaper. The default record mode is normal. And what this means is that Reaper will simply continue to record until you press stop. That's the mode that I'd like to use first, so there's no need for me to adjust the record mode. I'll enable my two-measure pre-roll, grab my guitar over here, and get started. I'll be using my Telecaster for this and Reamp Studio from Audio Assault for my tones. The tone currently sounds a little something like this. And it's not perfect, but it's good enough for what I need. So with my record mode set to normal and my pre-roll engaged, I'll also turn on my metronome, place my cursor where I'd like to start. And for those who don't know, what the pre-roll does is it allows me to record a few measures before my actual punch in point. It won't look like Reaper is recording the part before the punch in point, but it'll actually capture those two measures ahead, which allows me to play into a section. So again, with my pre-roll engaged and my record mode set to normal, I'll press record and get started. And we're done. Let's save that and go back and take a listen to our work. Alright, let's go back to the beginning of our project and take a look at the other two record modes. I'll right click the record arm button again, and my next option is record mode, time selection, auto punch. This is one that I like to use frequently. I'll engage that mode, and what this does is if I make a time selection, we'll start here at measure 68 through measure 72, I'll just pick a random section there. And if I press record from any point in the project, it will only record on the armed track for the duration of this time selection. So I'll arm my second guitar track, and what I expect to have happen is for measures 68 through 71 to be recorded, but everything else to be ignored. Much like what I explained for the pre-roll, Reaper is actually recording outside of these guidelines, but it will simply trim that media and allow me to crossfade after the fact to blend my performance. Let's record another pass and I'll show you how that works. I'll turn my metronome back on so I can hear my count in. Before I get started on this next pass, I mentioned the pre-roll on my last take. I'll expand this track, and as you can see, our recording looks like it started right there where my cursor is, but I can grab this left edge and drag it back, and we've actually captured the pre-roll to get that pickup note. For this particular song, it's very important that I get that pickup note in there, so the pre-roll is critical to this performance. So with my pre-roll enabled and my metronome engaged as well, I'll go ahead and start here in the beginning, 
but with my time selection auto punch engaged, this time selection is the area that I'll be focusing on. I do feel that it's important to play into a section, that way you get the most natural performance. I'll save that and go back to the beginning of my project. And we can see now that I have two takes listed here for the section where I had the time selection. I have the option now of using either my first take or my second take. And as I stated previously, with the time selection auto punch, essentially I get a pre-roll and a post-roll. So as long as I had the recording continuing, I have everything before and after this and can access it by trimming. I'll collapse my take lane so we can focus on the most recent performance. And if I zoom in, grab the left edge of the new take, and drag it over the left side, I can begin to crossfade from the previous performance. We'll zoom out a bit, and I can now grab this crossfade point, hold shift and left click and drag to change where I bring the new performance in. And again, the purpose of this is to allow me to have a seamless crossover into the new take. Let's take a listen. I'll need to crossfade the last part going out as well, just to make sure that it's glitch free. <coughs> And that sounds pretty good. Taking a quick look at our final option, I'll right click the record arm button and we have record mode, auto punch, selected items. This is very similar to the time selection auto punch, but it allows us to split a media item and focus on recording that particular piece without having to have a time selection. For example, if I make a time selection here, highlight my second guitar track, and I'll press shift S to split based on my time selection. This gives me a new media item that's independent of the left and right sides. I can remove my time selection, and with this item selected, now this pass and recording will only focus on this area. So even if I start at the beginning, this media item that's selected is what will be recorded. We'll go back to the beginning, and we'll start at the same place right at the beginning, with the primary focus being the highlighted section. I've still got my pre-roll and my metronome engaged, and we'll get started. Now let's scroll back and we can see that this is performed in a similar fashion to the time selection auto punch with the exception of the time selection no longer being needed and it simply focuses on the selected media item. If I zoom in a bit I can still grab the left edge of this and drag it over to create my crossfade and we still have the same type of pre-roll and post-roll as we did with the other options. This gives us the flexibility to be able to find the precise point where it's best to fade in and out of a different part of the performance. If I bring my take lanes back into focus, we now see that I've got the two selections that I did additional punches on, and I can select which of these takes that I'd like to use for either of these two parts. And going back to the beginning to take one more listen, I think that we can use any of these takes and have a pretty good sounding performance. We'll disable that metronome and take one more listen. <laughs> And there you have it. Reaper has a handful of different recording modes that can make your projects a little bit easier to work with depending on your particular recording needs. If you're a newcomer to Reaper and there's something else in particular that you'd like to learn more about with regards to recording live audio, be sure to drop a comment below. I hope this helps. 
If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the buy me a coffee. I'm not drinking as much coffee these days, but I still appreciate the donations. Or super thanks links below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. the song goes. Man, it gets too high for me to sing anyway. Maybe next time.